channel i'm hawkins simmer and today we're doing another speed build yay okay so i whipped this one up because in the last video i talked a lot about how pronouns are being brought to the game and how that is very important and how we should all just get on board with treating other people with respect and dignity and you know not getting bent out of shape and making something about ourselves that maybe isn't about us to begin with um and that was right obviously at the beginning of black history month and i do have a hawk and simmer twitter account i don't use it a ton i should use it more because i i mean i like it i guess i just feel like i love twitter i stupid love twitter i've said it before like i would go off grid if i could still have twitter um but I like my personal Twitter a lot more than just plain Sims Twitter. I like Sims Twitter, but I don't know. I, I don't have like a community there. I don't have people that I interact with. But this past week, because of Black History Month, I started seeing a lot of, you know, hey, support black creators, support black simmers, da da da. And I was like, you know, actually, I, re I really, that's something that I definitely am lacking in. Like, I love Hey Harry, but as far as other like, prominent black creators i obviously know or like recognize um some of the you know like profile pictures of some like other black cc creators but i actually don't follow as far as i know a lot of black sims creators so i started kind of digging and there were a lot of people posting like these are my favorite black creators you should follow them and i went through like one by one and just did because truthfully like I said, I don't use that Twitter account a whole, whole lot, but I want to make sure that when I am using it, I'm seeing people from all walks of life and especially black creators in this community that are already underrepresented, underrepresented words. <laughs> I just wanted to take a second and talk about that here. I, I guess I'm going to get a little bit vulnerable here, um, but I was not raised in a household that necessarily... I mean, my parents wouldn't have ever identified it as racist, which is hilarious because my dad absolutely is a raging racist. And my mom definitely is on the spectrum. I don't, she's the kind of person who would be like, well, I don't hate black people, but she was just never raised to like go out of her way to understand and cherish black people, I guess is the right word. Like it's not enough to not be racist anymore. <laughs> like it was never enough, but it's especially not enough anymore. Like it's not enough to just denounce racism. It's important to be anti-racist. I don't want to make any excuses for myself, but I definitely was not raised to understand the complexities of racism in America and globally. So as an adult, I've been trying to educate myself and know more about it. So like I said, I sort of started with Twitter. Honestly, it was by chance that this person's uh, tweet came up on my actually not my sims timeline my personal twitter timeline um it's at what a great day and day is d-a-i she listed like two or three dozen other black sims creators and i just went through and i mean i didn't follow every single one i want to follow people that whose content i would probably enjoy so i tried to follow people who build i mostly watch building youtube if I'm going to be watching Sims content. So I went through and kind of followed people who were more about building. I know there's a lot of people who do story stuff. I'm not really into that as much as you can tell because all of my videos are built. But I did follow a lot of those people too. There was a lot to choose from. And I don't know, like that might seem weird to be selective about it, but I do feel like if you're going to follow someone, like a follow isn't empty or it shouldn't be. It should be a meaningful follow where you're going to engage with someone's content. And maybe that's not how everyone sees that, but that's definitely how I see that. I want to be engaging with the people that I end up following. I want to like their content. I don't want to just do it and make it like, oh, look at me, I followed some black creators for funsies. So I didn't do that. So then I started seeing other tweets like this of black creators promoting other black creators. So there was another one from Shy Simmer, C-H-Y-S-I-M-M-E-R, and then Ocean Sims as well. And that one is O-S-H-I-N Sims underscore. And this was all on Twitter. So then from there, I went through and found the ones that 
use YouTube and went through and followed them. I don't use Twitch or other like streaming platforms like that. Honestly, I just don't have the time to like watch three consecutive hours of something. A lot of times if people have a Twitch and then they post like highlights, I'm really, really into that because I feel like I still get to consume content, but it's a more condensed version because I be busy. (laughs) On top of doing this, like I, I also, you know, like to sleep sometimes but also because I have a full-time job so it is hard for me to catch streams there's I don't watch any streaming platforms actually because there's just not time but that's kind of bare minimum like that's that's below the bar way below in my opinion and I'm sure in the eyes of black creators I also started reading so you want to talk about race by Ijoma Oluo this book has been out for a while I've actually heard of it many many times and I have been doing that now it's not the kind of book that you can just speed read through though. I've been trying to only listen to an hour or so at a time and then kind of like taking that in a little bit. There's actually a workbook that I am also going to purchase. Um, So yeah, that's something that I would like. I would recommend that to someone. I'm going to put a link to it below, but I'm also going to put a link to like Libby Library. I know for me, books can be expensive. They just are Um, And using like an online library source, first of all, is usually free. You can usually get a public library card where you live for free. And I don't know if that's how it is everywhere, but everywhere I've lived, you can get a library card for free. You usually have to have some kind of proof of address and and a photo ID. But yeah, that's something I would recommend, not just the book itself, but like I'll link Libby down below. Um, most libraries I think are like hooked up to this or have some kind of online consortium of sorts so it was really easy to find this book at my local library online and that way like first of all you don't have to go through Amazon because you know f Amazon but like this is a way to listen to something for free but like the the writer is still getting money from this because your personal library has like paid for a, an e-version of the book essentially. So yeah, that's a free resource and so far it's been really great and it's not just talking about her personal experiences. It is. She's using tons of her personal experience to kind of lay out what this is. But this is truly like, man, white people have literally been given way too much grace by black folk. It's just, it's just the truth. When you're listening to this woman explain to you like you're a giant baby how to handle this, like it really puts into perspective how disgusting this is. And I don't mean that she's speaking to you like a baby. I'm mostly saying that white people are babies. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. It's uncomfortable. But that's kind of the point of the book is that these uncomfortable conversations need to happen. And she kind of talks about conversations that she's had with people she thought were her friends and people who definitely weren't her friends and then people who definitely wanted to continue to be her friend and talks about good and bad conversations with those people. And actually in the second chapter, I believe that one is called What If I Talk About Race Wrong? What if I make a mistake? And that's something I've definitely felt before because I have. I have made plenty of mistakes and not just I'm trying to talk about this well and I've made a mistake. I've been an ugly, awful person (laughs) and made tons of mistakes when talking about race. Um, So there's, I think in chapter two, there's like very practical, this is what you need to do to set yourself up to have a good conversation about race And then (laughs) she goes a step forward because inevitably you're going to do it wrong. Inevitably, you can't possibly know how to speak about this in a nuanced way because you've never lived those experiences. And I'm talking about people who are not black. She also gives, I think it's three or four tips on how to like step back away from a situation that has gone awry that has gone wrong that's like good practical information it's good to hear about someone's experiences but it's also nice to know that like this is literally very tangible practical things that you can apply to your life it is genuinely a self-help book for ignorant white people and so far it's been really great and I feel like in my adult life especially in my like mid to late 20s I have been able to like have more nuanced conversations about race and equity in America. And this book is just like, it's reinforcing all the things that I have learned and it's creating more ways to understand and more viewpoints and just kind of like building that foundation. I felt like I've been building myself for the past 
couple of years. So this might kind of seem like it's coming from left field, but it really isn't. With the talks about pronouns last week, I talked a lot about, you know, just being respectful towards other people. It's just not that hard. And the important part is not getting it perfectly right every time. The important part is attempting to get it right. And that's how these conversations can happen too. There's, like I said, no doubt that mistakes will be made. The wrong thing will be said. Your personal, your personal foundation will be questioned if you've been raised, at least the way I've been raised. I can't imagine anyone who's white in America couldn't have their perception questioned by the perspective of a black person because they have just lived a very different real experience. So I'm going to try to wrap that up kind of right here in an effort to not center myself as a white person in this conversation. But like I said, I will be linking uh, the book, So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijoma in the description down below and a link to Libby. And then I'll also put those Twitter ads. I'm going to remember to go back and put those in um, where I'm talking about them. So please, please, please follow those people and then kind of look through some of their tweets to see some of the people that they've promoted in the last few days. If you're not following Black creators, then you're not celebrating Black creators. And that's just part of being anti-racist. Sorry. So anyway, thanks for listening. Go listen to a Black woman talk about it now. Okay, thanks. Um, but this house is super cute. <laughs> I'm sorry that that got really heavy, but just to kind of finish it up because we're at the end here. This house is super cute. I cut out most of the landscaping in the backyard and everything because it was going to be incredibly long. And more important than the house was this conversation. But it ended up being a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom home with an office and a screened in porch. Uh, this house was so darling. I did um, build this from a reference photo. Uh, for Pinterest. Um, I did look at the floor plan. I don't think they're exactly the same, but they're pretty close. It's a cute little, it's a cute little build. I kind of thought that there was a toddler and a child, but they were kind of both on the cusp of that age group. Like they're about to age up. So I thought this like child's room, like this child is so ready to be a teen. Like they're that kind of kid in TV shows that are like way too wise to be as young as they are. And then open concept living area, with a cute little mud room coming in. I made a garage. Dude, I'm, I'm getting back into garages. I just want to put a garage in, in all the houses I build because they make them look more real. And, um, and closets too. I've been putting more closets in. So hopefully I'll have Dream Home Decorator or, you know, that other one get together top tier. Um, so yeah, took a little break from the previous series that I was doing, but I will be getting back to that. I just thought that Last week's video and this video were important to have kind of right at the beginning of this very important month. Um, yeah, so my rec is that book and to celebrate black creators. So thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! but it's still important to have them.